I'm an ordinary man. I wake up and the sun is still visible. I live on the second floor of a three-story building. I believe in taking care of myself and my creativity. That's why I follow a vigorous morning ritual. After a quick look out of my window, I would usually sit at my desk and simply let all the energy flow into my hands, fingers, and let a blank canvas be filled with only the deepest of my subconscious. Sometimes though, I wonder, can there be a better way? So recently there has been a huge interest in computer generated images, especially like with the uprising of uh, Dali Mini and uh, all the Twitter users using it for um, weird combinations of words and images. For those of you who don't know what Dali Mini is, it's like you explaining a concept to a friend and then he envisions it in his head and the computer is just printing out what he's thinking about and so uh well i wonder what it would look like if tony Hawk did a backflip right at the last supper huh. interesting that's cool no but like where is the spicy stuff like the fun part where is the comedic brilliance we need more of that but Dali Mini isn't capable of that because someone thought well we might need a NSFW filter on that because I don't know why. Okay this is the closest we can get just with the publicly available prompt. Well typing a prompt won't generate anything useful for us today. That's why I decided to take like 100 steps back Skip over the whole intelligent part, no language processing, no uh, transformer networks and all the AI stuff which people get Nobel Prizes for. And I just take technology that is 100 years old basically. We can use that to generate AI which is capable of generating images which are not safe for work and are funny and original and the world needs that. Yes. Okay, listen up. This is my five step plan for AI image generation. Step one a shit ton of training images, all hand drawn. Step two two neural networks, one for classifying, one for generating. More on that later. Step three. Train the neural network to generate infinite amount of images. Step. That's all. Okay, my plan is to just code a small Python application with one main window where you can draw and then a button and an input field. You can label what you're drawing in here and click next on the button here and then you draw what you're drawing. Uh, when you press the button next, it saves to disk and clears the canvas so you can uh, draw again. Okay, everything works as expected so far. You can draw on the canvas, put in your labels, clear the canvas and press next in order to save the image and also append an index onto it so uh, each name is unique.
corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Welcome back to Dick Academy. So in this part, we are going to learn about GANs, which for for Generative Adversarial Neural Networks. And they are quite simple, actually. There's one generator um, in green here and one discriminator in red. Let's call them D and G, respectively. And the generator generates images which get passed into the discriminator, um, all of which are based on random inputs. And well, the discriminator has to decide which images are either fake or real. So the whole training consists of fooling the discriminator into thinking that the input image is indeed real. And in the beginning, that's very hard because the generator is just outputting random images. But after a few training cycles, hopefully, not even I can differentiate the two. Okay, the next step is to install a framework which actually allows us to create AI because it's hella difficult to code it yourself, obviously, and it's not very well optimized if you do it yourself. So there are a, a lot of frameworks for this. I'm using PyTorch usually because it's just the easiest and the most straightforward, in my opinion. There is TensorFlow as well, but I'm not a fan of that because I did not learn it, and so it's difficult. So the first thing you'll need is the Conda package manager which is my choice because the usual pip manager isn't really suitable for PyTorch because installation is usually local and we'll need global package management and this is just easier with Conda and also I can get it to work with pip. Then the next thing you'll need is CUDA toolkit. I use 11.3 because I find it to be the most stable, but you could use something else, but you'll have to adjust the PyTorch installation. You may be wondering why are we installing something for the GPU? There is one simple reason. I don't want to wait an eternity for anything to output. And neural networks are basically linear algebra on roids. So GPUs are good at simple tasks like multiplying and adding and linear algebra is just that. So we'll use the GPU. If you actually want to know more about it, there are great videos about it from people who are way smarter than me. So I'll put some links in the description. So, after quite some time, we actually got something to run. It is very difficult to align all the tensors and all the dimensions. Well, it took forever, but it works now. And I could test it with some sample images. I just drew a few circles here and there to just test it out because I didn't want to waste 15 hours already drawing the real data just for it to not work. So I just tested it with circles. This is my data set. And this is what the network came up with after a few generations. Not bad, isn't it? Um, the next part is very technical. So uh, maybe if you don't want to hear this, just skip it, okay? For those of you who are actually interested, this is a quick rundown of the code. Here I just load the training images, test if the GPU is available. Here I display a few training images, and this function is to initialize the weights in a normal distribution. This is what the paper does. I don't know why you have to do it, but it works better that way. The interesting part is the generator network, which consists of a few convolutional layers and, well, an input which is on Latin space. Doesn't really matter the dimensions because it's just a random input. And, well, the output is 
an image so it's 64 by 64 in this case and then we have a very similar discriminator network which has an input of 64 by 64 and an output of a column vector which either shows one or zero if it classifies as fake or real I'm using cross entropy loss because this is the best loss function you can use to compare two outputs. The training loop is very simple as well. First, I train the discriminator only on the real images and then on the fake images. And well, then the generator gets trained by the same loss function. But now the loss is high if the discriminator correctly identifies the image of the generator as fake, which is what we try to minimize. Okay, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Can't believe I've actually drawn so many images. I mean, it weren't even that many. It worked with relatively few, but still I sat here for one hour just drawing penises. Yes. Why? Anyway, here's the result. This is the best result I've gotten. Yes, it works. can generate an infinite amount of images now so that is a success I think do I win art prizes with that probably not but I could AI is definitely capable of winning art prizes we can see it here it has happened it will happen in the future people will get mad about it and maybe they will get mad about me winning art prizes in the future because I will definitely win one with something like that maybe not banksy if you are open for collaborations i'm free okay what do we learn from this project difficult to say but we learned about gans well i didn't really teach you that much but you can look it up you have the information now you now know what they're capable of i mean they're capable of much more. I've been very overkill with the network. I mean, it's able to replicate real human faces with that architecture. And I'm just replicating just a stroke with width of a few pixels. So that's not really a overwhelming task for the neural network, but it can do that. It's great to know. Also, these images are better than the ones from Dali. I mean, they don't have any of the intelligent part. I said we don't have any of that, but that's okay. Can live with that. If you want to see more of that, do not subscribe because I'm probably not uploading that much. But if you happen to stick around for a year or two, I may consider uploading something else. Until then, stay 12 year old.